Advanced persistent threat attacks are among some of the most complicated attacks. With large budgets and significant effort put into developing malware and attack execution, APT groups represent a significant threat to both governments and large commercial entities worldwide. That is why Kaspersky researchers monitor how APT groups refresh and update their tool sets. In the third quarter, Kaspersky researchers continued tracking cyber activities by APT groups carried out in various regions, including the Middle East, Korean Peninsula, and East Asia. Today, together with Kostin Ryu, Ariel Jungheit, and David M. from the Kaspersky Global Research and Analysis Team, we are looking at how the APT landscape changed in the third quarter of 2021. Could you please tell us a little more about your standout findings for this quarter? The SolarWinds incident that came to light uh, last December stood out because of the extreme carefulness of the attackers and the high-profile nature of their victims. The evidence suggests that uh, Dark Halo, uh, also known as Nobelium, had spent several months inside Orion IT's networks to perfect their supply chain attack. In June, which was more than six months after Dark Halo has gone dark, we observed the DNS hijacking of multiple zones that allowed the attacker to redirect traffic from the government mail servers to computers under their control. We suspect this was probably achieved by obtaining credentials for the control panel of the victim's registrar. When victims tried to access their corporate mail, they were redirected to a fake copy of the web interface. Following this, they were tracked into downloading previously unknown malware. The backdoor, dubbed Tomiris, bears a number of similarities to the second stage malware dubbed Sun Shuttle, used by Dire Halo last year. However, there are also a number of overlaps between Tomiris and Casior, a backdoor that has been linked to the Turla IPT threat actor. None of these similarities, however, is enough for us to link Tomiris and Sun Shuttle with high confidence. However, taken together, they suggest the possibility of common authorship or shared development practices. You reported attacks leveraging commercial surveillance tools for malicious purposes during this quarter and presented research about two surveillance suits. Can you share a little more about these findings and why they matter? One of the platforms we covered this quarter was FinSpy for PC. We published a four-part private report covering the Windows, Linux, and macOS versions. We've been tracking FinSpy for years now. In 2017, we discovered a new Adobe Flash zero-day vulnerability used to deploy FinSpy on Russian-speaking targets. We publicly reported this attack, and not long after, we saw a decrease in detection rate for FinSpy in our telemetry. Later, during routine investigations, we detected suspicious installers backdoored with Metasploit stagers. It was only a year later that we saw a host serving these installers together with FinSpy Android implants. We then took a deep dive into these installers and discovered the full infection chain deploying FinSpy for PC. In our investigations, we also found UEFI bootkit capability in addition to the already known MBR bootkit. Similarly, we discovered another different set of very advanced activity using a framework that uses kernel mode rootkit and persists using UEFI and MBR bootkits. These attacks targeted government organization and telecom companies in the Middle East using a previously unknown set of malware with similarities to a tool named Throwback and also integrating Slingshot in the execution workflow. Throwback and Slingshot are part of a proprietary commercial penetration testing toolkit officially designed for red team engagements. However, it's not the first time we saw Slingshot used in an APT attack. We saw Throwback Netloader and Slingshot used in a 2018 Fruity Armor campaign with similar targeting. Have you seen any dynamics in regional activity? And if so, what do you think was the main driver behind that? Regular followers of our APT reports will notice peaks and troughs in the activities of threat actors in all parts of the world. So in any given quarter, we may report an upswing or a downswing in the activities of APT threat actors speaking any particular language. However, it would be unwise to draw conclusions about long-term trends from a single quarter. 
Such variations may simply be the result of a temporary dip in activity, or it may result from limited visibility of threat researchers, because no research team has a perfect view of the entire threat landscape. APT threat actors make use of various techniques to gain access to target systems. Can you tell us something about the methods you have seen in the last three months? Is there anything that especially stands out? As you might expect from the world's most advanced threat actors, the techniques used to compromise target system can be very sophisticated. This includes the DNS hijacking by Tomiris, allowing the attacker to redirect traffic from government mail servers to computers under the control. Another example is the modification of a fingerprint scanner software package on a distribution server in the SmudgeX campaign. The use of low-level tools, the deployment of MBR and UEFI bootkits discussed before, is a further example. However, APT threat actors still make extensive use of social engineering to trick staff working in targeted organizations into doing something, such as clicking on a link or attachment in an email message, to gain initial foothold in their target systems. Given the trends and tendencies you have witnessed in the past quarter, what advice would you offer to companies that want to defend themselves better? We would offer several recommendations for how businesses can protect themselves from APTs. Provide your SOC team with access to the latest threat intelligence. The Kaspersky Threat Intelligence Portal is a single point of access for our own threat intelligence, providing cyber attack data and insights gathered by Kaspersky over more than 20 years. For more advanced security teams, our on-premises Kaspersky Threat Attribution Engine allows customers to easily attribute malicious findings and better focus their threat hunting efforts. For endpoint level detection, investigation and timely remediation of incidents, implement a good EDR solution such as Kaspersky Endpoint Detection and Response. In addition to adopting essential endpoint protection, implement a corporate-grade security solution that detects advanced threats on the network at an early stage, such as a Kaspersky anti-targeted attack platform. As many targeted attacks start with phishing or other social engineering techniques, educate all staff about the tricks attackers use to gain a foothold in a target organization and ensure they learn practical skills, for example, through the Kaspersky Automated Security Awareness Platform. To learn more about our interesting findings for the third quarter, check out the full APT Trends report on Securelist. Don't forget to click the subscribe button so that you never miss an opportunity to learn more about the latest cybersecurity discoveries.